Hello class. In this video, I'm going to explain how to do exercise 5.7. This exercise concerns informal proofs of the Boolean connectives, in particular with disjunction, because you're given some disjunctive information in your argument 5.7. What you're going to have to do then is do proof by cases in order to prove that Carl is happy follows from these three premises that you're given. Now let's just look at what those premises say. It says either Max is at home or Claire is at home. So we know one of them is at home. But by premise two, we know either Max is not at home or Carl is happy. And by premise three, we know either Claire is not at home or Carl is happy. Now, it might not be immediately obvious why those three things add up to the fact that Carl is happy, but once we start running through the possibilities, we'll see why that follows. So what do we do in order to complete this exercise? We need to pull up a written document and start doing a proof by cases in English, so an informal proof. I started that for you here, exercise 5.7. So I just said, I'm going to do proof by cases, and I'm going to start with case one, that Max is at home. Now, there's no need to start with that disjunction. When you're given multiple disjunctive premises, it's actually always possible to do the proof starting with any of the disjunctions. But sometimes one of those premises might be more intuitive for you to start with than the other. So uh, I just started with premise number one. That's what determined my case here, that Max is at home. So I'm temporarily assuming that, and I need to show that my conclusion follows in that case. Then I'll move on to case number two. But the fact that Max is at home does not entail that Carl is happy without some other information. Namely, we need to use premise number two. So within that case, what I said was, by premise number two, we also know that either not Max home or happy Carl. But notice this, the first case of this second disjunction contradicts my temporary assumption. So that can't be the case. That entails a contradiction. So clearly Carl has to be happy. This is the one that obtains. So that's what I say. I just say by premise two, we know this further disjunction, but the first case there is impossible. So we know that Carl has to be happy, namely the second case. When I say first case here, notice what I'm doing in a sense is proof by cases within proof by cases. I'm ruling out this case of my second disjunction, and I'm showing that this, uh, the second disjunct of my second disjunction must obtain, namely that Carl is happy. Here's another way to think about it if you want that might be more uh, simple for you. If I do proof by cases with my second disjunction, and I assume not Max home, that entails a contradiction because it contradicts my other temporary assumption that's still in force because I'm within that first case still. But a contradiction entails anything. So once those two things entail a contradiction, from that contradiction, I can conclude that Carl is happy. So my conclusion follows in that case. And of course, by reiteration, it follows simply in the second case too. So my conclusion does indeed follow from my second disjunction within my original case. So we do know Carl is happy follows in case one. Now we've got our conclusion for case one, so now we can just stop and we can move on to case two. So I'll just write, case two, now we can temporarily assume the other thing, namely that Claire is at home. Notice my reasoning is going to be quite analogous here. Now that Claire is at home, notice we put aside Max being at home entirely. We're done with that. Case one has ended. Now we're just thinking about Claire being at home. And we just need to appeal to premise number three, because we know either she is not at home, so not home Claire, or happy Carl. So again, we're going to be able to prove our conclusion by using premise number three within case number two. That's because again, home Claire, our original assumption contradicts this possibility. So we know this case can't obtain. It has to be Carl is happy. So happy Carl follows in this case too, because not home Claire is impossible. Or we could say, it contradicts our assumption for case two. So now we're being extremely explicit as to how this additional premise interacts with our temporary assumption for case two in order to block the possibility that Claire is at home and entail that Carl is happy. Again, if you find it simpler, you can think of it this way. Not home Claire, this case, contradicts my assumption here and a contradiction entails anything. So this case entails that Carl is happy and this case entails Carl is happy by a trivial reiteration. So using proof by cases on this disjunction, Carl is happy follows in case number two. Uh, so now we've shown that the conclusion follows in both cases. So we can just say since happy Carl follows in both cases, cases we are done or it must follow from our original premises, period. Uh, something like that constitutes a definitive informal proof um, that that conclusion does indeed follow from those premises. So when you have a bunch of disjunctions, you need to think about how they might interact with each other and do nested proof by cases, 
so appeal to certain disjunctive premises in a way of doing proof by cases inside other cases. That's usually the way to extricate the information from those kinds of premises. Okay, thanks.